Hi, Phil Lindsay here with Peep Magazine. We're here with Tommy Ward ahead of his first headline fight on March the 5th, Rain Meadows, right here. You're fighting Robbie Turley. It's a British super bantamweight title eliminator. It is, yeah. First fight of 2016, but like we say, first headline fight. It is, yeah. Like I said, um, training's been going really well. We've been in the gym. Uh, it is my first headline fight, and uh, I'm looking forward to that because hopefully... Uh, more people could be able to see me and start to support me, and I'll be, get, be able to get more following, following to more, more of my fights. And um, Rob Turley, I mean, uh, he's a good opponent. He's a tricky opponent. He's, he's fought a few good, um, good opponents, a few good fighters. Yeah. Uh, he went the distance with Carl Fant more over ten rounds. Um, but a bit of a tricky opponent. But you know, like I said, training has been going really well, and I'm prepared for whoever's in that ring on the fifth of March, and I'm going to be 100 percent ready. So. No matter what it is, I'm sure I'll turn up good and I'll get the I'll get the victory. Yeah. Now, obviously, uh, one of the key things about when you when obviously when you turn pro, you are was it European amateur champion, and and it's the when you, when you turn pro, it's getting all the different styles of fights and things like that, and that, that's, that's your apprenticeship really. Um, what have you seen of Robbie Turley? Have you have you seen any of any action of him in online at all? No, I don't watch my opponent's uh, box, to be honest, unless I've already seen them before. Yeah. But um, if I haven't seen them before, I don't watch them. Um, uh, I just prepare myself to the best of my ability, and on fight night, I just do what I can do, and I'm sure it'll be good enough, you know. But um, Neil Fallon, I'm sure, has seen him before, and he knows what he's doing. He works up the tactics and that, and I just follow the plan. So, uh, like I said, it's all been going really well in training. Neil's been really happy, so... As long as he's happy, I'm happy, and I'm can't wait for the fifth of March. Well, going back to the amateur days and amateur successes, that's you know you turn up for tournaments, maybe fight three people, you don't know who you're going to be fighting, so you can't really prepare for those. So, I suppose when you've got that background, it's probably more natural for you to do it this way. Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, sometimes you can overthink things, overlook things, um, but like I said, as an amateur, you just have to prepare yourself to the best of your ability and box to the best of your ability. And adapt when in there when and needed. And you have to adapt when in there. If things are not going your way, you've got to adapt. So um, that's just the way I see it now, you know. You just go and do what you can do best, and then if it's not working, you've got to adapt to the situation. But like I said, like Neil's the one that trains. He's the one that studies the fighters and comes up with the game plans. So um, my trust is in him, and I follow the game plan. I'm sure we'll get the victory. So... I'm looking forward to it. Well, it certainly hasn't done any harm mapping your career out so far. No, it hasn't. Now, you, you mentioned, obviously, being headline and getting the more following, more exposure, things like that. I think to a certain extent, especially when you're coming through, because were you 19, 20 when you turned over? 18. 18 when you turned over. It's sometimes good, to a certain degree, to come under the radar when you're serving your apprenticeship because... You're learning your lessons. You may be making little mistakes that you, you know, you go back to the gym. You put those right, mm. but now that you're sort of coming more to the forefront, you're getting towards your title fights now. It's just like that natural progression, isn't it? But do you feel yeah. more pressure, the fact that you're headlining a show or not? No, I don't feel no more pressure. It's still a fight. All my fights has been the same, and uh, you've got to win all your fights, no matter who you're fighting, and no matter how many rounds you're doing. But it is a headline, but I'm not, not, um, no, no more pressure about that. But, um, you know, like I said, look, things are going really well and I'm really looking forward to the fifth match now and I can't wait to get in there and uh, show everyone what I can do. Like I said, on the way up before I was going under the radar, I've never boxed seen you before. But, so when I did turn pro, we had a few steady fights, uh, boxing senior, obviously all the people, yeah, uh, learning the trade a bit more. But now that we're here, Neil seems to think I'm ready. I've always thought I was ready, but I know each step now I am getting more and more ready. And now I'm looking to do a really good job on the 5th of March and hopefully get the British title shot before the end of the year. Yeah, yeah, so British title fight. Obviously, Martin had a very, very close fight against yeah, Jazza Dickens. It could have gone either way. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have argued either way. No, no. Um, and you look what Jazza Dickens has, has got to fight Rigando there now, but it yeah, just goes brilliant. to show the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It's, it's yeah, of course. It, uh, I mean, anything can happen in boxing. I mean, the Jesse Dickinson's British champion, yet he's fighting Gilliam Gondo, maybe one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. So, you know, like, anything can happen. I mean, uh, he is a, he's a good fighter, Jesse Dickinson. He's a, he's a nice lad. Um, and as you said, that fight could have went either way. Maybe if Martin won that fight, maybe Martin be fighting uh, Gilliam Gondo at the minute. But that's boxing. That's the way it goes. And um, you don't know what's in the sport. You don't know what can happen. So that's what makes it so exciting. Well, the thing, obviously, Martin's your older brother, but he's not like an old brother, so there's still plenty of miles left in the, in oh, the tank yeah, there with that course, one as well. Yeah, so. he's, uh, he's my older brother, but uh, 
he's still got a long career left ahead of him, you know. So, I mean, he's only he's had I think twenty odd fights, and I think maybe he's had three maybe hard fights if that. So, I mean, and certainly his last fight was the hardest fight he's ever had against Dickinson. So. Um, it was a corker, wasn't it? It was a great fight. It was a great <laughs> fight. It was unbelievable. It was something I like to really like to watch again. Um, but I said uh, we're in the sport there and do the best you can do in it and see how we get on. Now I know if, since I got involved behind the scenes with the box and doing the interviews and the the media things and stuff, you get to know the boxers more. And if when I see boxers who I know and they're in tough fights, I can't help but you, you know you, there's that element of that so. What's it like when you're watching your brother in fights like that? <laughs> it's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean um, it is. You, you, you just you getting behind them and that. Then you, it's a more stressful thing because you're not doing it. You know, mm -hmm. because you're helpless. You're just sitting exactly. there watching. You know, and uh, someone's in a real hard fight. There's nothing you can do about it. But um, that's what he's trying to do, though. Really, that's what I think to myself. He's trying to do this. He does it all the time. So, just leave him crack on. Yeah, you know, know. must be must be mixed feelings when you're there. Yeah. But back to yourself, so Robbie Turley, March the 5th, what what you got a message to say to the fans ahead of the fight? Come out and watch on March the 5th and you're going to see the best of Tommy Ward and once you get rid of Turley, I'm going for the British title fight. And beyond. Oh, well beyond. And beyond. Tommy Ward, nice always a pleasure. Top yeah, man. Thank you. Follow this man.